You're listening to The Classroom Collaborative Podcast with your hosts, Dee Dee Wills, Ed Brock, and Adam Peterson. Here we go. We're so glad you're here. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Classroom Collaborative Podcast. It has been a while. I am Adam Peterson. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Wills. And we are excited to be back. Uh, yeah. We, we had to take a little break. I, I caught the Rona. <laughs> I've been so down he has for, the Rona badge. Yeah, right? Is there a sticker for that? Like everybody gets their stickers that they got I, their shot? Do you get a badge that you had it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Except for a collective. I'm so sorry you were sick. Oh, and yeah. I'm so glad that you are um, on the healing road. I'm glad that you um, are getting better, even though well, you just run over by a truck. That's the thing. I It could have been so much worse. Yeah. I, I keep counting my lucky stars that... It didn't spread to my lungs. And I mean, I had a cough. I ended up in the hospital, but everything checked out okay. I still have no idea where it came from. Had to have been one of my students, I think, or the kids brought it home from school. I I don't know. It's just, and it's amazing. Like I've I've talked to so many people now who have have seen me share about it or have have shared what happened to them. And it it hit me all energy. Like that's all it's been is I have not been able to catch up on, on sleep. Yeah. But other people are like, oh, my gosh, I was down with a fever, and I've never had a fever. Well, that's good. Patricia got it, but she she had already had her first vaccines, so they think that helped because she just had a stuffy nose. That was about it. Yeah. But uh, I got the official notice. I'm out of quarantine today. So <laughs> You're free. I'm free to do whatever I want, which is not much at all right now. <laughs> Any old time. Okay. Nobody wants to hear me sing. Okay, that's so right. today we thought we would talk about – Maybe the last few books we got off of Amazon. Yeah. Because there's some really, and there's always some changing things out there, right? There's always some new books, um, some books that we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I have a few that I just thought were kind. Some of them are fun. Some of them are poignant. Um, That's like a $3 word. Are you pressing it? Yeah. yeah? (laughs) What have you been doing this morning, Mrs. Wills? (laughs) I just Uh, rolled out of bed. (laughs) I've been working with a thesaurus. You've been reading that thesaurus. um, yeah, you know, it's funny you you brought this up too to to, to talk about this. Um, one of the days last week when I was on on quarantine and sitting outside soaking up the sun because that that helps more than anything. I'll, I'll attest to that. I felt better in the days I was outside. Our garage doubles as a it shouldn't, but as a storage unit for all the stuff from my old classroom. Oh. And I was going starting finally started going through like tubs and tubs and tubs of children's books. I'm like, you know what? There's so many in here that. I can think off the top of my head that my students never, ever looked at. Like, they were just ones, you know, that went on a shelf. And right. so we were starting to put together some books to donate to to organizations or to kids at Trisha's classroom or whatnot. And as I was going through it, I was like, oh, my gosh, I totally forgot about this. Or I totally forgot about this book. And not being in the classroom full time right now makes you forget about all these amazing books that are out there. And yeah. the, even the ones you have, not necessarily have to go buy, you know. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, one of the things that I'm really lucky as well is um, we have a fantastic public library system Mm -hmm. here in Douglas County. Um, And so you can just go online and request them and then they send you an email and they pull them and hold them for you, which I think is just how libraries work. I mean, I think think that's how they work everywhere. Um, Yeah, that happens here, too. It's this amazing place. You just (laughs) go and you borrow books. It's like a movie (laughs) library. But anyhow, it is, um, it's really, um, a great system. So, um, oftentimes, you know, we're budget strapped and we can't do the buy thing. And so those borrowing systems right. are fantastic. If you have a nice school library, that's great. But if a public library is near you, even oftentimes, if you're in a small town, when I was in a small town, um, they would take from the main library and the same thing would happen. It would just come to you magically. It's through amazing, elves. isn't it? <laughs> it is amazing. <laughs> Um, and then you get to keep them for a while and then you just bring them back. So, um, you know, what's funny is that's, that's how I read better. Like uh, if I, if, like we have a, we have a whole library of books here at our house on a shelf, you know, that we've collected over the right. years, but I'll so spend, you just return them in time. yeah, like I'll spend months and months and months and months on a novel if it's ours that we own, but I'll try to get it done in two weeks. If it's one that I, if I have borrowed, you know, cause there's that deadline. Right. Right. And, and the other thing that's pretty cool is, I mean, you could do the, the borrowed books um, and leave them in your classroom for students to use. You could also do the same thing with audio books and put them on an audio track mm-hmm. um, and borrow them as well. Because, 
you know, the the books that you get off of Scholastic, that's how I got all my audiobooks. Um, you know, they, they kind of add up. So right. that would also be a great way to um, have a listening center um, and have students have an opportunity to, to get a variety of books. I don't need to tell teachers here that the more books that they read or <laughs> hear, you know, the better their vocabulary, the chances of success, um, right. their literacy skills go up, all of those things. So even well, though I think we have... Go ahead. It, oh, sorry. It's good to note, too, and this could be depend on where you live and the size of your library district and whatnot, but I know here in our, our town, and we have a smaller town, um, like if you build relationships with the children's librarians and, and get to know them and, and go and support it and support the programs, and I remember there were times where my team would, would send an email or call them up and say, hey, we're doing a unit on da 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 Can you mm-hmm. put together some books? And we wouldn't even right. really have to go in and find them or check them. We'd have to go check them out, but – the library would have a pile there for us, knowing that they were being used in a classroom. So it's one of those things that, that I mean, that's why that place is there. So just reach I, out. That's a huge resource that oftentimes, um, you know, I, and I know that they get, ex- I mean, most librarians, I would say most librarians, right? 99% <laughs> of all librarians are very excited about the idea of having a task to help you um, with your students. We even had um, one that would come into our class uh, classrooms and read for us. So that was oh, all yeah. kind of neat. So those are all some resources that you can have. I, I imagine nothing like that's happening this year as far as having somebody come in to read. Um, but, you know, you could maybe do a Zoom or something like that, um, right. a visiting um, librarian over the Internet. Well, let's talk about what you bought, because I have I've found a bunch that I went through. I haven't really bought any books lately, but um, I found some that I pulled out of my tubs that I know I want to read with my little ones when I get to see them again. But what uh, what are your new and New and noteworthy books there, Mrs. Wills. Well, I'm going to say they're new to me. Um, I don't know that they um, exactly when they were published. I'm looking. I'm looking for that information. <laughs> um, I don't have the publishing date right in front of me. This one's from 2019, so it's it's not very it's not yeah, very new, but Brand it's new. really good. It's called My Monster and Me, and it's written by Nadia Hussein, and the um, illustrator is Ella Bailey. Um, Wait, can you show me the cover of that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I've, there's another book called My Monster, I think, that, that I've, I've used, but it's not that one. So there's a picture on the cover of a big yellow monster. He's, he's kind of waving. And then there's a little boy um, underneath it. And um, it's a reassuring story about sharing worries. So, you know, one of the things that um, I've always had in a classroom I had several students who were very, they were worriers. They worried a lot. Um, if mm-hmm. I were going to be gone, they were worried. Um, you know, when I was doing a lot of um, traveling on the road for presenting, um, I always made a point of, you know, sending in an uh, email to the substitute or the, uh, the text to the separate substitute to just say, hey, tell so-and-so I'm thinking about him. I'm proud for him. You know, just so a worrier, right. um, he would he would get really, really worried if, um, our schedule was not as it usually would be, or if we were going to have a um, fire drill that day, I, I just always made sure I told, you know, student, our students all have different needs, right? And so just kind of front loading, that was really great. But this would be a great book for him. Um, I like I, the big yellow monster, too. I would have I would have a student come up to me, you know, the first few weeks of kindergarten, everybody, you know, all all of them are a little worried. <laughs> um, they're all a little fretters. And she Where's my mom? She goes, Mrs. Wills, I'm holding it together. I am holding it together. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Every day, I'm holding it together. I'm so proud of you. That's so, awesome. yeah, My Monster and Me is a great little book. It's not um, a really long text. Um, it's, you know, a few words. Um, Sometimes for our little ones, though, those are – those are the best. Have you ever, like, I, there's some great long books out there. Don't get me wrong. But there's exactly. some that I'll, I remember reading in my class. I'm like, okay, I lost them. Like, no matter how engaging you are, no matter how active you are during the story, right. some children's books need to be broken up into, into a couple of readings for sure. I, I agree. This is definitely one. Um, and, and if you have, if, if, if you are a, a parent with a child that's a worrier, um, it's really the book is for three and up. So it's, it's a really simple text. Um, but a really great one uh, for students who might worry. Cool. You know, I was one of the, when I was talking about going through my tubs and, and finding books and one of the ones that just sparked me and it's one that I read every single year and it still has a note written in it from the girls. I taught these two sisters who I think are in college now who gave it to me. Um, 
It's a book I will never forget and I'll never forget to read. It's called Mrs. Spritzer's Garden. Oh, I love ever, that book. Oh, it's <laughs> such a good story. Yes. Like one of those books that you can go back to all the time and, and just, it's a great end of the year book for sure. So if you teachers are listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I want to find, you know, a book to read on the last day of school. If you've never read Mrs. Spritzer's Garden, definitely check it out. So it's, it's long story short. It's, um, about a teacher. It's all told through this idea of growth. It's a, you know, a growth, I guess kind of a growth mindset book. Um, more about taking care of each other and, and what school means Nurture. to you, but yeah. yeah. So a teacher, is given a packet of seeds that she plants on the first day of school and she nurtures them and watches them grow and, and helps them each on their own way. And by the end, she cultivates them and, and realizes that she's ready to send them off. And, and the book is obviously the analogy is there's uh, tying the, the seeds to the children in her class. But oh, it's, it's such a good, good book. And I pulled out of one of my tubs out in the driveway and I, was, I just sat and read it. And I was like, <laughs> sat and read it by myself in the sun last week. <laughs> That's a perfect thing to do while you're recuperating. Right. That's- that was a great one. Um, I had a principal who gave that to us all on the first day of school. That was a really neat Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was a really good one. Yeah, I love that book. Okay, so my next book um, is kind of cool. Um, it is written, it's called Maybe Something Beautiful. And it's how art transformed a neighborhood. And um, let me just, I'm going to look really, really quick. Um, to see if I can find the uh, copyright date on there, uh, 2016. So I've never um, heard of it though. That's cool. Oh, it's it's pretty cool. So it's by um, Isabel Campoy and Teresa Howell, and it's illustrated by Rafael Lopez. And um, I have been diving deep into the work of Rafael Lopez as well as another illustrator that I'm going to be talking about in a second, um, because. Um, when this airs, um, we're going to be very close to the opening of a virtual conference that I am putting on. And my very, very good friend, Adam Peterson, is going to be presenting. I was going to say, can we talk about that yet or no? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's been like total hash hash. But, um, you know, it's been in the works for about, what, two months, three months now. Um, oh, yeah. And Rafael Lopez is going to be one of the presenters. Um, he is um, an illustrator. And an artist and his his body of work is really pretty well known um, to those in the children world. Um, he wrote um, the date or no, he didn't write. He illustrated the day you begin, um, which was a really great. A lot of people use that at the beginning of the year, um, mm-hmm. plus just a ton. So I'm really excited about interviewing him. I'm going to be interviewing him. I mean, no pressure or anything, but I'm going to be <laughs> interviewing him. And um, so I wanted to kind of dive a little bit further into his history. And he is an illustrator who uh, is from San Diego as well. So he travels back and forth between San Diego and Mexico. And he was born in Mexico and raised in Mexico, and now lives in San Diego. Wow. He divides his time. But this book is a little bit, not a little bit, it is um, about his life and what he did um, in San Diego for, for murals. So there's an area uh, in San Diego, Barrio Logan, um, which is, you know, it's it's like an East Village in San Diego. It's, it's um, very diverse. Mm-hmm. Um, and he at... And his wife designed and planned murals in that neighborhood. So it's funny that I knew him before I knew him because driving through there, our, our most favorite authentic Mexican place is right there. Oh, so really? I've been through, yeah, um, been through there so many, so many times. But um, anyhow, this is just a beautiful book. Illustrations are fantastic. And, um, you know, it's the impact art has on our society so here's just a i know adam is looking i at, love those artwork yeah that's cool i mean it's just it's absolutely beautiful so okay i know it's only 9 a.m but now you want me to have me wanting mexican food that sounds really good yeah. <laughs> you although live, i can't taste everything so i don't I know. know if it's worth it right now <laughs> it's just a huge shout out if you live in san diego or been to san diego you need to make a place a trip to a place called las cuatro milpas which is run by, I mean, it's been in business, I think, since the 40s. And they make everything fresh every single day. It is life-changing. You need to bring cash. It is life-changing. It is life-changing. And it's also gene-changing because, like, when I go, my jeans, like, completely shrink. It's so weird. Um, but you have to bring cash. 
and you have to be prepared to stand in line and you need to have your order ready when you stand up there. Really? So, yeah. I mean, but if you stand in line always, there is never not a line. Um, okay. So this is weird that you just mentioned this. Um, Cause now I got to know if you know, we went to San Diego. This is totally off topic, but now I'm thinking food. We went to San Diego in, oh my gosh, it was probably the year Trish and I started dating, like 2001, 2002, oh. um, with her family. And we went to this steakhouse. We were going to go to, we went to like San Diego Zoo and we did the aquariums and we did like the whole sightseeing thing out there. Yeah. But there was a steakhouse called Hunter's Steakhouse and no one else has ever heard of it before, but her brother and I, yeah. we talk about it. Oh my gosh. Like it was the best steak I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I'll never forget it. I, and I'm sure it's probably just a dive place, but. You know what? I think Mark and I, um, ate there a couple of times when we were dating. Oh, it was so good. For some reason, he did not choose to propose to me at the Hunter. Uh, <laughs> it was in the parking lot of McDonald's. So, really? Fun, yeah, fun fact. Hey, fun look fact. at and look at you now. So, um, <laughs> that's awesome. So, one of the things that I I was I was looking at too when we were talking about books um, here in Illinois, and you know this name too, Dee Dee from the the Illinois ASCD conference. Becky Anderson is her name. She's uh, she co-owns Anderson's Bookshop here in Naperville, yes. Illinois. And she's always at that conference doing yeah. like talks about new and noteworthy books. And they are a big um, proponent. If you guys haven't ever check it out, um, Anderson's O N Anderson's bookshop dot com. It's a little local bookshop. I think they have three locations here in Illinois and they've made it through the pandemic. They, they've stayed alive through Amazon. Like they're an awesome little bookshop. But the reason I brought them up was they are a big um, supporter of the Illinois Reads program. And every year, Illinois Reads puts out a list of, like, new top books that I don't know how they're decided on. Well, here, says, Illinois Reads was introduced by the Illinois Reading Council March 2013. The initiative encourages people to read books by Illinois authors. Each year, the program offers a new list of books at six different age levels. Illinois Reads kicks off in March and concludes in November with a family reading night and an annual statewide event. So, anyway, if you go to their website and go to books and click on Illinois Reads, they have their list of all the Illinois read winners this year. And there's some really cool looking uh, children's books on there as well. Some are novels and young, you know, young adult right. books. But um, so one of the top ones for the children's books on Illinois reads list this year is a book called Jasper and Ollie. And I think it's illustrated and written by the same guy. I'm pretty sure he's the illustrator too. Yeah. Uh, his name is Alex Willen. W I L L A N, Alex Willen. Uh, but Jasper and Ollie, it looks, I think it's a sloth and a fox are these two little friends. And, um, it's kind of a book about the, the two characters are so very different that it says kids and grownups will giggle as they decide if they're more of a Jasper or an Ollie. And it's, it's a book about, they the, said so the concept is about taking time to smell the roses, a perfect lesson in our very overly scheduled world. It's about these two little friends who are racing. To get somewhere, one of them stops to smell the roses and do all these little things while the other one is trying to hurry, hurry, hurry her on. And it, I just thought it, the cover looks super cute. I haven't read it, but I know that when Anderson's puts out a list, they are books to definitely pick up. I know a lot of my collection that I have are books that I saw Becky Anderson speak about um, or heard her talk about at a conference. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I would be this. I'm I'm definitely. I, I fluctuate between the two personalities. The smell right. of is when we're trying to get out of the house. Mark is hustling me along. I'm telling you, I, um, I'm, I'm usually the one last one. Yeah, you're the last one too. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's we're probably not a very good team. No. Um, the next book is um, this is a Caldecott winner. Um, it's the We Are Water Protectors. It's just beautiful. Um, there we go. It is this one's was uh, this year's Caldecott winner, and yeah, it's a twenty. Well, not this year because. We've only had a few months in this year, but 2020, um, Paul the Cot winner. But um, it just says, water is the first medicine. It affects and connects us all. When a black snake threatens to destroy the earth and poison our people's water, one young water protector takes a stand to defend earth's most sacred, sacred resource. So, I mean, I think it's a, it's a great one to think about for Earth Day, um, which is right around the corner. Um, it's about... Land preservation um, is told from a Native American perspective. Um, mm -hmm. It has um, um, both the illustrator and the author are Native Americans. And I don't know that we have enough um, 
Voices for Children's books. Right. Um, and, I, and it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. So this would be a great one to maybe think about um, around Earth Day. Very cool. I, you know, it's weird to think that that's coming up next month. My goodness. I know. When you said, like, we've only been a couple months in, doesn't it feel like 2021 has <laughs> lasted quite a while, though? Like, <laughs> it feels a bit like you're on, you know, mile 20 of a marathon. Right. Um, another one on, on their list, and, and these, this author is one that Landon, my son, and I absolutely love to read together. His name is Jeffrey Brown. He wrote the um, the Jedi Academy books. So Jedi Academy are, like, uh, precursor Star Wars storybooks about kids who go to the Jedi Academy to learn how to become a Jedi. Okay. okay. But um, this one on the Illinois Reads list is called My Teacher is a Robot. And it's it says Fred does not want to go to school because it's boring, especially thinks because he thinks his teacher is a robot. Okay. If only Fred could imagine a way for his day to be more exciting. So it's it's about this little boy who whose imagination kind of takes over his his entire life and gets wrapped up in this this oh. kind of fantastic world of his. But I do not I, that sounds really cool. It looks cool. I, again, I haven't read it, but I've read the Jedi Academy books with with my son, and so you know it's going to be probably along the same the same line of engagement. Yeah, they're fun yeah. little picture slash novel books that are that are easy reads for kids. Nice, nice. Okay, so my last two books are just more humorous. Um, no, we need that right now. But this book, I feel like, is a window into my soul. It's called I Really Want the Cake. And um, <laughs> it's by Simon Phillip. And um, it's it's just a really, really cute book. Um, how on earth are you to resist the most amazing cake? One little girl is about to find out and just how hard it can be. So she's the whole time is talking about, you know, talking to herself. You must not eat the cake. I really want the cake. Um, and she's doing all these different things to distract herself from getting the cake. Not gonna lie, help <laughs> me. And then, you know, disaster strikes. They just have a binge moment in the pantry. I'm not, I'm not that's talking funny. about that's never happened to me, <clears throat> but I've heard that. <laughs> thing. Um, anyhow, what I love, I love this book because it's funny. It'd be fun to read. You could do it with lots of different voices. Um, but it's also told from a first person perspective. So it would make a great book to add to your uh, mentor text library. When you're thinking about how do you give a first person perspective, what does that look like versus a narrative telling who's telling the story, right? Narrative or um, is there a narrator narrator or um, is there um, is it told in the first person? So that's cool. Yeah, it's a really cute book. This one uh, that I just found, too, is one that I, I think I'm going to order because I think my kids would love it as well as Trisha's kids in her classroom. But um, it, it's called Just Read. And it's it talks about how reading is such a big, big accomplishment for kids no matter what type of reader you are. It says it follows a diverse group of word-loving children who grab the opportunity to read wherever and whenever they can. They read while waiting and while sliding or swinging. They read while in music, and they read in Braille and signs on the road. So it talks about how reading is yeah. all around us at all different times. I think that's perfect. You know, I talk about that with my with my little, I mean, not, not my preschoolers so much, but I work with some pre-K kiddos who were just talking about finding letters on signs and finding letters around the house. And right, right. So, that's a cool book. Just Read is what it's called by, I've got to find the author's name here, Lori, L-O-R-I, Degman, D-E-G-M-A-N, Just Read. Okay, I'm writing these down so you all can um, come back and find them if you want to. You'll just go to my, my blog. There is a tab that says podcast, and you can, you can listen to all of the past episodes, but then you'll find the show notes there as well. It's a really cool looking book, too. The kids are all, it looks like watercolored together, and cool. it's a really neat book. Um, so my next book was also part of my conference quest, um, You're because, like that. <laughs> conference quest, um, because I, um, have invited this illustrator slash author to also, um, participate in an interview with me. So, um, it's Dan Santat and like, I've been a massive fan of his for a long time. Um, and then I ordered books that I, you know, hadn't gotten when they first came out. And I've like, it's gone up. So he wrote the book Beekle, um, which won a Caldecott. Um, he also wrote, um, or illustrated, he wrote and illustrated that book. Um, that one's it about an imaginary friend, which it's been out for a bit. So I didn't, I didn't pull that off my shelf. Um, he also wrote, um, or illustrated the book Dude, which is about 
What are they? I don't know that one. Oh my god. Should I know that one? Uh, your pre-K and your kindergarten students would love that. I'm gonna go grab that one really, really quick. It's called Dude. Um, Dude. How have I not seen that before? It's by, um, Aaron Reynolds. Oh, sorry, I know Aaron Reynolds, but I don't know that book, no. Oh my god. And it, instead of it saying words by or written by, it just said word by. Word. <laughs> That's Aaron awesome. Reynolds. Because there's only one word in this whole book, and it's dude. So it's about these, um, I think they're beavers, and they're surfing. And as they're surfing, I've talked about this book a lot. So I'm, Yeah, I'm, but I've never seen that one. But as they're surfing, they come across the shark. So um, anyhow, it is hilarious. That's cool. Um, and, and it's said all of his books that I've I've come across um, tell the story with pictures. So right. um, I know that it's a lot of what we talk about in in teaching writing is having really good model um, text to go back to. And this one is spectacular. Every single page is a mini lesson. Every okay. single page. So you could you could just take every page and say, you know, you could look at speech bubbles. You could look at expression. You can see motion. You can see. Um, perspective. I mean, it's just an amazing book, but that's not the one I'm talking about. Okay. So the other book I wanted to talk about is called Are We There Yet? And it is by, um, written and illustrated by Dan Santan. And what I love about this, it says, welcome to the road trip of a lifetime. Um, you're talking about car rides and the conversations that go back and forth. So it starts with, you know, you're invited to a birthday party. Um, and just the illustrations tell you exactly what's going on in the story, oh, cool. right? Look at the dad's face. I know. And the <laughs> got her eyes rolled back in the back of her head. And it just goes, I mean, it's, a, it's like a graphic novel. That's it's really cool. Very few words. That's one thing I would say about all of his books is that he chooses his words very carefully. They're sparse. Mm-hmm. Um, he wrote um, and did After the Fall. Okay. Now how Humpty Dumpty, you know, got back yeah, up, which was huge. Um, and those illustrations. So um, here's the, you know, it's just so creative. That's really cool. It's just, I mean, he's got his imagination going on. There was a pirate scene. There was. Um, Look how detailed those pictures are, too. My goodness. Immensely. Immensely. I mean, the whole thing is like uh, his imagine when it goes to the imagination, it goes upside down. Um, it's just it's one of those books that you want to linger on because um, you don't go through once. You don't notice everything the first time. Right. You've got to read it um, many, many times. So um, are we there yet by Dan Santan? So I'm super excited. He's also going to be part of the conference. So we have That's cool. 30 people. Do you really? 30 plus presenters um, plus three kind of keynotes. So. Awesome. Really, really excited about it. Um, and if you're listening to this on Monday or Tuesday, we're going to open up registration on the first. So keep All an right. eye on that. So maybe the next episode we need to talk about that. I think it would be really cool. Yeah. That All would right. Be, yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks for sharing those, Dee Dee. That makes me want to go buy some books now for my, my, my little ones. But... Our, our friendship is expensive. I'm sorry. <clears> well, I that. guess two teachers that, that when, when Dee Dee brought this idea up to me and I mentioned that I was looking through my tubs, that, that's one thing that I think we forget about sometimes. I know when I was in the classroom, my books were on shelves after shelf after shelf after shelf around the classroom. And there were so many that I, I'd forget about, you know? So sometimes yeah. it, it's it's worth the time just to sit down and remember what you have and find one that maybe you haven't read this year and, and maybe one that your kids picked out or one that just sparked something, you know? So right. Uh, right. use what you have for sure. Use that library, but uh, Amazon's the way to go as well. Right, right. And there's a lot of um, small bookstores like you had mentioned as well. Mm-hmm that um would really need some support so if that is something that you know if you can be patient oftentimes you have to be patient to get those books um you know they're not amazon's not constantly circle they're not constantly circling your neighborhood anyhow so there's some small bookstores that you can support as well that i think is a great idea and i'll add a couple of um of those that you can find online that you might um you know want if you if you're thinking oh i need this book for you know are we there yet would be a great end of school year kind of book to do 
Um, and they could talk about their summer plans or I think, mm-hmm. I think the summer is going to be a summer of the road travel versus, you know, maybe air travel. Um, yeah. You know, smaller, smaller trips, as things start to open up, maybe seeing people that you haven't been able to see for a long time, such as grandparents or, or relatives um, that are that are. So. They're going to be hearing, are we there yet? A lot. Right. So. <laughs> no, I, there's something special about going into a small local bookshop, too. Like mm-hmm. we found one back in the I think it was the fall or maybe around Christmas. We were in a town near here. And it's just, it was just this cool little shop, kind of a hole in the wall place, like wood floors, wood, you know, all over. And it was just, it was just something different about going in a bookshop rather than, yes. you know, a big box store or searching online. So yeah, I'm I highly encourage people to check that out. My favorite one in San Diego is still, cause you know, it's been, a, um, it's been a minute since I've lived there. Right. Um, it was called Yellow Book Road. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and we found was- one when we were in New Orleans a couple of years ago. Um, just like on a side street off of Bourbon Street somewhere, but it was it was one of those places where you could tell that people had just collected book after book. Like there was no organization system whatsoever. It was like books were stacked on top of each other from the floor to the ceiling. There were shelves. There were not shelves. There were books thrown on couches. Like it was just this giant, basically a giant closet full of books. But you could just browse around and buy anything you wanted to in there. It was it was the most bizarre looking shop I've ever seen in my life. But I mean, there had to have been hundreds of thousands of books in that store. It was crazy. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things you go in there and I just get, you know, get really excited when I start right. to walk in an area and the children's section is all all built out for you. Oh, Yellow, yeah. Book, Yellow Book Road was um it has been permanently closed. I don't know exactly when they shut um their doors. Um I know they moved out of a certain place and so a certain location that was I used to go to, but it was just a book de- dedicated to children's books, um, cool. a store dedicated to children's books. So it was, it was really cool. And I'm, I'm sad to see that they're not there, but they had opened the door, you know, 30 something years ago. So it's very possible right. that, um, you know, they just retired. So, yeah. And All right. Well, thanks for sharing it. those ideas. We'll yeah. see you guys next time. All right. Bye y'all. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the Classroom Collaborative Podcast. If you are enjoying these episodes, please make sure that you subscribe wherever you are finding them. And share and rate it so others can find it as well. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.